Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Yes, still more construction and also Jason playing his latest obsession, which is Japanese businessmen in suits doing like stop motion dancing and singing. I don't, I don't understand it at all. It really confuses me. So we're just gonna move on with all of the noise disturbances. Jason, turn your crap off! He refuses, okay. So let's go ahead and jump on into the hot news today, which uh, I guess also confuses me just as much as Japanese businessmen in suits dancing in a weird way. Uh, having a phone from Xiaomi, which is gonna be the Black Shark 2 Pro, has all of the standard specs and features that you would expect from a flagship in 2019. 12 gigabytes of RAM, Snapdragon 855 Plus. You have a 20 megapixel F2.0 camera on the front and you have a 48 megapixel and a 13 megapixel on the back for different reasons. It's all cool, 4,000 milliamp hour. It's the screen, the screen that confuses me because I don't know who needs this, how it could be powered or why even ever, but their 6.4 inch AMOLED screen is going to be 240 Hertz on the gaming phone, the Black Shark 2 Pro. What the heck? And the price is actually not terribly bad either. For the 12 gigabyte of RAM on 28 gigabyte storage, it's about $435 when con converted from the Chinese yuan. And then the highest end model with the 256 gig storage is around $580. That's amazing pricing for something that has flagship specs. And then also probably the best display that you can get on any device, not even just a phone. The The obvious difficulty with this is that the phone also has a input latency of 34.7 milliseconds. So it's not exactly uh, all that great. It, it kind of just seems like a fad. 144 Hertz screen seems to be the highest that you would really want to go on a gaming phone at this point. There's really zero benefit to anything higher at this point, kind of just like how back when the resolution war was going on with smartphones, uh, I think Sony was one of the first to come out with 4K. And then it was just like, I can't see the difference and it's just draining my battery. What is happening? Once you get to a certain size, it just doesn't make any sense. And there's nothing that can power 240 FPS. Like what game runs at 240 FPS on the freaking Play Store? I don't even know what this can take advantage of. So, but if you want it, it's cheap. It's just only available in China right now and potentially in India sometime soon. That's what Xiaomi did with the previous Black Shark 2. So it's expected that it will go on sale in those two regions. So you could figure out how to get it yourself, I guess. I'd buy it. I'd totally buy it for 430 bucks, even without the freaking 240 Hertz display. That's a pretty great deal for what you're getting. And then let's talk about apps that can support a technology. That's the Galaxy Fold because it has been reported that it's going to include over hundreds of apps that can support the foldable screen, including big players such as Facebook and Spotify. Kind of good, I guess, having an app that can do across the screen, but that would just be like tablet mode. And then when you fold it over, then it's like regular mode. I don't think it's gonna take that much configuration. I could be wrong. Like you don't really need special folding apps. You just need an app that can expand to tablet size. So I guess the, the, the potential comes in from resuming the app in phone form factor on the back and not necessarily the display rectifying, but the actual continuation of what you were doing when you closed the phone. But I thought we got this figured out like a while ago. There's been other phones that were really weird. I can't think of a good example. I'm hearing stuff slide on the roof. Dangerous, we're gonna die. Speaking of dying, the Pixel 4 XL has some benchmarks that were released or leaked rather, and it's multi-core score is dying compared to everything else in its region. The iPhone XS Max, the Note 10 Plus, the Pixel 4 XL with the same specs comes in dead last at this point. Obviously, it's not complete. These could just be pre-production samples that have been tested on Geekbench, but as of right now, probably the thermal limiting that the Pixel 4 does isn't great for performance, but at the same time, you're probably not gonna notice it either. In fact, that would probably mean better battery life, to be quite honest, having worse performing processor. And then in case you care about the Radeon RX 5700 XT, Sapphire's Nitro Plus OC Edition has been pictured. It's actually, it depends who you are, but the black and gray aesthetic with RGB works for me. I'm happy about it. And more news on the 5700 XT, Corsair has released their RX series GPU Hydro Blocks for the card. So if you want to water cool it and you're not using 
Bits Power, EK. I don't even know if Bits Power has block, but EK definitely has blocks. Then you can go to Corsair if you want. And you know what else you could do if you want? You could get the Beta BIOS for Ryzen right now, the Ryzen 3000 chips that are supposed to be able to fix the clock speeds because a beta version of it leaked out up over on the Chip Hell forums and Tom's Hardware got their hands on it and tested it out. And what they found was at least in the beta version right now, 3700 sees some clock speed improvements, the 3900 doesn't and sees some weird anomalous performance decreases. But again, it's for a beta BIOS. This is not complete whatsoever. AMD probably hasn't even officially finished it at this point. And it is also only for the X570 godlike gaming. So there's still a lot of testing to be done. You can check out Tom's hardware analysis of it down in the sources in the video description in case you want all of their specifications. But the beta version of this BIOS update isn't looking too promising, but obviously AMD will roll it out when it's ready. And then for the 39 50X, the 16 core 32 thread CPU that's going to be out of stock the first day it launches, and you're never going to be able to get it until next year. At least that's my prediction, especially with how hard AMD has struggled to keep up with the, uh, the 3900X. Anyways, there's been a leaked uh, listing of it on an e-tailer website. Obviously, take this with a huge grain of salt, but they are quoting that the release date is September 30th. Obviously, this could just be based on the fact that AMD said this chip was coming out in September, and so they just picked the last date of September so that they couldn't possibly be wrong. But also given the 12 core stocking issues, I could expect AMD to push back the release of the 3950X and it's not quite ready with their binning issues. Or I will just get it sooner, I don't know. And then Intel in a bit of a bubble, buffle, curb bubbles. The issues going on with Apollo Lake. Apparently they're having some chips that have performance degradation uh, because of a few different issues in the microarchitecture of the 14 nanometer chips. Apollo Lake referring to uh, various Pentium and Celeron processors, probably not going to affect the majority of you, but Intel identified an issue with the low pin count real-time clock SD card interfaces on the Celeron N3350, J3355, and J3455, as well as the Pentium N4200. So they're expecting that there's gonna be degradation in those chips and they could potentially die and not even before the warranty. So uh, well, be on the watch if your chip is one of those. If not, don't worry about it. And then there's some news coming out about Intel's Project Z microarchitecture for their graphics cards that should be coming out sometime next year, at least according to Intel themselves. And they're discussing that this is actually the first microarchitecture overhaul that they've done for the graphics department since 2004. So, I mean, the Intel UHD 630 that you've been rocking in that 9900K, that is the same technology or architecture rather as what they rolled out in 2004, just scaled up and uh, turned into something that is slightly garbage, not that bad garbage. It's worse than AMD's APUs, that's for sure. But uh, the Project Z is supposed to be an actual massive overhaul of everything, which I would hope so if they're bringing out to discrete GPUs and trying to compete against AMD and Nvidia, this would be the good thing for Intel to do. And then something that I want, but I know I can't afford, LG has unveiled its first OLED TVs with G-Sync support. Oof, ah, OLED, G-Sync, hmm. Me wanty. It's gonna be available for their OLED TVs from 55 inches up to 77 inches, and it's gonna be a pretty penny, I'm sure. Freaking sure of that. And then anybody who writes documents on Google Docs or tries to complete like school assignments, hey, they did an update for you, which is an auto word count populator in the bottom left-hand corner of the display instead of having to go up to the stupid menu bar crap where you have to click buttons to get it. It'll now auto display for you in case you're trying to hit that 2000 word count that you need for that paper that you're writing. It's gonna be right there with you, friends. And then, also, speaking of like university writing papers, all that kind of stuff, Purdue University now has the Starship delivery robots on demand, my friends. You want robots delivering you things like pizza? I don't know. I don't know what these robots deliver. They could be delivering dead body parts. I don't know. It's a flat fee of $2 to get them delivered by robots. Purdue rolling out robot taking over. And speaking of half human, half robots, people with prosthetic legs actually are getting a cool new update where there's a new uh, nerve integration with the prosthetic that will allow them to actually feel their feet because of how it interacts with the tibial nerve. So it will connect 
with what's going on on the floor and send it right up to their brain so that they can still have feeling in their foot and not necessarily just have a piece of robot machinery touching the ground impersonal like. And then let's get into the dangerous bit of news, which is Google's getting charged with an antitrust investigation from 50 state attorneys general. And the biggest thing that I take away from this is that the plural of attorney general is not attorney generals, it's attorneys general. It boggles my mind. Anyways, this has a lot to do with their advertisement uh, part of the business, and they're gonna be looking into it. Google obviously saying it's not antitrust, we're just really good at our jobs. We are the ones who basically created this space, so of course we have like our fair share. We'll see where it goes, but what we won't see where it goes is Huawei's lawsuit against the US government for seizing some of its assets back in 2017. Uh, apparently the US government released it back to Huawei and Huawei was like, okay, we'll drop the lawsuit because this is basically an admission of guilt that you screwed up. Thank you for sending it back. More, more collaborations going on with Huawei and the US government. We gotta figure that one out. And then Amazon employees in the headquarters are actually going to be striking for the upcoming global warming, global climate change awareness strike. This is gonna be one of the first times that employees at the headquarters of Amazon have gotten together to band together to protest. Obviously, Amazon being a trillion dollar company probably can contributes a fair share to you know carbon emissions and whatnot, but uh, now, they're, now they're gonna be protested by their own people. Get wrecked. Reese, what are you gonna protest UFD Tech for? Uh, not enough pizza. Not enough pizza. Crap, man. Okay, and uh, crap as well for Alibaba. Speaking of Amazon, uh, Alibaba's the, the rival. The, anyways, Jack Ma stepping down as the chairman and CEO of Alibaba. He will no longer, uh, no, he's stepping down as the chairman. He was the CEO. Anyways, uh, the role is going to the current CEO of Alibaba, and he will remain on the board until next year, at which point he will drop off completely. So... Uh, cool. I wonder if this has anything to do with the fact that he said stuff about AI that Elon Musk was like, What? What? AI is gonna kill us. Uh, I don't think it will. You stupid bro. <laughs> Jack Ma, obviously one of the world's richest men, uh, basically walking away with his rest of his life set. So, good for him. I'm slow clapping the end of this hot news episode. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button while you're checking out how to get subscribed and also while you're leaving furious comments about things that you want included in the next episode, just tippy tap on over, use your mouse, click the like button, it's all good. I'm Brett with UFD Tech. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Dangerous, we're gonna die. You stupid bro.